Old Fall is a, a real place. It's the home of the Seymours, the Seymour family in Wiltshire. It's near Marlborough and it's still standing, although it's just a farmhouse nowadays, a, a Victorian farmhouse built on the site. Of course, everywhere Henry goes is Wolf Hall, and I wanted the title as much for its metaphorical resonance as because it's the place where, at the very end of the book, the characters are all going. They're taking apart the Cardinal's house. Room by room, the King's men are stripping York Place of its owner. They're bundling up parchments and scrolls, missals and memoranda, and the volumes of his personal accounts. They're taking even the ink and the quills. They're prizing from the walls the boards on which the Cardinal's coat of arms is painted. They told the Cardinal he was dismissed as Lord Chancellor and demanded he hand over the Great Seal of England. Thomas Cromwell is the central character of this book. It wasn't so much that I was interested in writing about the Tudors. I think I would have been interested in Cromwell in any era I found him. Such men are very rare, but what was particular uh, about Cromwell was the way that he cut straight through the social layers of a very rigid society, which makes him unique because no one of Cromwell's background had attained the heights of power in this way before. And I wondered, of course, what did that take? What unique combination of personal qualities and ambition and farsightedness? And to him, how did it feel from the inside? And that's the question that drives Wolf Hall. Thomas Cromwell, people say, that is an ingenious man. Do you know that he has the whole of the New Testament by heart? He is the very man if an argument about God breaks out. He's the very man for telling your tenants 12 good reasons why their rents are fair. He is the man to cut through some legal entanglement that's ensnared you for three generations or talk your sniffling little daughter into the marriage she swears she will never make. The Tudors, of course, are our national soap opera. We've all met people like these. Henry, the, the, the man who has six wives, executes two of them, divorces two of them. This is, of course, not the story of every family, but it's the story of society writ large and exaggerated and there for us to examine. Now, of course, it all took place 500 years ago, so customs were different, morals were different, but we can recognize these people. Uh, we can recognize the first wife, Catherine, as the woman who makes a career out of being wife and kills you with love and hangs on to a dead marriage, and Anne Boleyn, the mistress on the make, and Jane Seymour as the sly little minx always looking on, never saying very much, but finding out what's going on and ready to step in when people's world falls apart. We've all known people like these, and it's played out for us on this grand scale, and of course in wonderful costumes as well. <laughs> <laughs>